Yo, what's going on guys? It's right back again here bringing the video. This one I'm going to be talking about uh, Fedor once again. I love doing Fedor videos, so I wanted to do another one just talking about this. The topic of discussion for today is will we ever see Fedor in the UFC? Um, as you guys know, Fedor has been fighting for M1 Global now. Isn't even in Strike Force or anything like that. You know, Strike Force is axing its heavyweight division, so that's not an option. Um, Fedor is going to be fighting in Dream against uh, Ishii pretty soon, um, or by the time you're watching this, probably already happened. Um, so, will Fedor ever sign with the UFC? Let's say Fedor beats Ishii, uh, wins a couple more fights in a row. Will he ever sign with the UFC? Will we ever see it? Um, I'm going to make a prediction, and that is that I do not think we will ever see Fedor in the UFC. Ever. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, people who agree, who think we, you know, it's just never going to happen, give me a thumbs up. People who think that no, he, he will be in the UFC eventually, give this video a thumbs down so we know where we stand. Um, now let's talk a little bit about it. So, you know, Fedor a couple years ago had the opportunity when he was undefeated to sign with the UFC. Um, Dana White uh, says, he claims, that he offered him pretty much, it looks like, a couple million a fight, which is the most he's ever offered any fighter at any time um, up until that point, and probably still, um, you know, the most he's ever offered anybody. And Fedor and M1 Global turned it down, completely turned it down. And then there was a lot of scrutiny, you know, people saying, oh, Fedor doesn't want to fight top competition, Fedor is washed up and this kind of stuff. And then shortly after, he uh, he did go on a losing uh, losing streak and he lost three straight against uh, Verdum, Bigfoot, and um, Dan Henderson. So, do I think that, um, you know, Fedor's skills have anything to do with him not going to the UFC? I don't think so. I personally think that, um, if you guys don't know, uh, Fedor owns a good portion of M1 Global. I think it's somewhere around 30, 30 to 50 percent, something like that. A lot of uh, this information is uh, is not public. You know, you can't really find out too much about uh, Fedor and money online. His uh, One of his managers um, has said that he's the highest paid uh, mixed martial artist in the world. And I tend to agree with that. Being that he's such a big shareholder in M1 Global, when they throw an event, okay, um, he's going to get you know a, a good majority of what that event makes. You know the uh, the event against uh, Munson in Russia. I mean, even freaking Putin went to that fight just to watch Fedor fight. That's how big of a legend he is. I mean, how many like is there a fighter in the UFC that when they fight an American fighter, uh, Barack Obama shows up to the fight just to watch? No, not even close. Or you know, anywhere else, any country, uh, I can't think of that happening with anybody else. I mean, Fedor is a legend. There's no question about it. He still has fans left over from Pride. He still has all these people just dying to see him compete, just dying to see him fight. Um, and I'm one of them. Fedor is one of my favorite fighters of all time. Definitely in his prime, when he was around, he was my favorite fighter. There was nobody else really like him. The way he would just, you know, just destroy guys, you know, beat them at their own game, just smash them with reckless abandon, you know, just didn't care, just beat the snot out of everybody. It was amazing to see, and it's something that we might not see again. Um, you know, that kind of wild man fighting, you know, you just don't see. Like, you look at all the guys now, all their techniques are very straight, they're very polished. Even the way Fedor punches, everything about him is just very animal, you know, it, it's it, it's totally animal. The way he throws his, you know, he throws his hooks and everything, like, you know, you just don't see guys punching like that. Guys throw hooks and stuff, but not like the way he did. Like, he's just, you know, he just go crazy on guys, and he was beating everybody. It was crazy. So, Fedor has a huge following still. Whenever he fights, you know, if he gets a good portion of that cut, I mean, you're, you're talking here, some UFC events probably bring in somewhere, you know, along the lines of, 20 million to 50 million dollars in revenue. I mean, how how many people think that um, you know UFC 100 with Brock Lesnar against Shane Carwin, and there was some other fights in that too. I think GSP was on that card too. That card, I, I believe, was like the highest grossing card in UFC history. And they don't release the numbers; it's all private. But I'm assuming they probably made somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 million dollars on that card. I think they did. When Fedor fights, even if he fights somebody like Munson or whoever, I'm sure he's got enough fans to sell maybe. 10 or 20 million dollars worth of pay-per-views and seats okay i'm sure he does there's no question about it if he's getting half of that or 30 percent of that he's going to be getting 5 million 10 million who knows you know what i mean who knows how much exactly they make but i guarantee you it's a lot it's probably going to be five ten million dollars a fight something like that um and you know getting paid from another company like that just being an employee See, this is the difference between being an employee and being, you know, an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, running your own show 
Fedor is running his own business. Fedor is running his own show with M1 Global. Sure, he has to pay his handlers and all the other people, you know, half of what he makes, or maybe more, and they're, they're getting rich like crazy off him. But he's still getting paid so much more than he would get paid if he was just an employee. I, I know that we have this mentality here in North America and in other places of the world that, I'm, a, I'm Canadian, by the way, that um, to, to make money, you got to get a job. You just have to go work for a company. You have to get a job. But, you know, yes, to make a, you know, a decent living, you have to get a job. But if you want to make a lot of money, you got to get in your own business. That's the only way you're going to do it. If you want to be a millionaire, you know, most times you have to do it your own, on your, you know, on your own. You got to do it yourself. You got to start it yourself. You have to, you know, reap the benefits of the company. You got to start your own company, start your own business. You, you have to do it. There's no other way. If you're just an employee, businesses will not pay you what you deserve. You know, two million dollars for Fedor. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe that's what what the UFC offered him. But maybe did you guys ever think two million dollars the most the most any fighter would get paid plus sponsorships? Maybe he's making ten million a fight with M1 Global. I mean, we don't know for sure. There's no way to know for sure because it's not public. But I think that's kind of what's going on here is that Fedor is making tons of money because if he's a big shareholder like that in the company. He's going to be making a lot of money, and I also think that this is fantastic, and I encourage other fighters, even though from a fan perspective it's not great because all the UFC is monopolized and has all the great fighters, I like to see guys like Fader go out on their own. I'd like to see Anderson Silva say, you know what, screw you UFC, I'm going to put on an event in Rio okay, um, against who knows who, and I'm going to sell like, you know, fifty million dollars worth of tickets and stuff, you know, uh pay per views and everything. You know, I'm sure if Anderson got with the right people and split it fifty fifty, he could probably make, you know, quadruple more, ten times, thirty times, forty times more than he's making right now. So I don't think that uh, Fedor not going to the UFC years ago had anything to do with his skill set. I think it had to do with him just being smart about his business and doing what was best for him. Um, so that being said, this type of situation, will he ever be in the UFC? I don't think so. Once once a person gets off on their own and they start doing it themselves, or at least half themselves, or, or a third of it themselves, you, you tend to not see these people, if they're successful, go back and just become a good employee again and just listen to whatever you know Big Daddy tells them to do, whatever whatever Big Boss Man tells them to do. That's what I hate about the UFC. You know, you got guys like you got Dana White firing, you know, Miguel Torres just because he made some stupid joke on on his uh, Twitter. And I'm not defending what Miguel Torres said; it was wrong. But you're gonna fire a guy over that? I mean, these guys are fighters. What kind of people do you think fighters are? They're the people who end up in jail when they're in their, you know, like when they're when they're in their late teens. They go to juvie because they're fighting all the time. They get in fights because they're doing things that are wrong. They're not the best kind of people, generally speaking. I mean, of course, there are a lot of fighters out there that just love to compete and want to do it. Like, for example, Randy Couture is a standout person, and there's tons more. Rich Franklin was a teacher, and yada, yada, yada. And I, and I you know, personally, I like to fight, you know, if the situation's right. You know, if, if I'm in the right, I do enjoy it. Uh, and I was, I'm sure many of you guys do, too. If, like I said, if, if the situation's right, obviously, you're not going to attack somebody and things like this. But most fighters, you know, enjoy fighting, but also are pretty troubled. That's just the fact of the matter. So, <clears throat> going on from that, you know, you've got you've got you know the company and, and you know a president who's you know monopolized MMA, who doesn't treat his employees well, in my opinion, firing guys when they act a little bit stupid for no reason, even when it's not related to their job. Did he not show up for work or something? No, he's just doing his thing. So anyway, to make a long story short, once you see a person go off like that, like Fedor has and done his own thing, I can never see him going and just being an employee again. And I can't see Dana White giving him an offer that would make sense for him. So in my opinion, if the question is, will we ever see Fedor in the UFC? I don't think we will. And you know what? Good for Fedor. Good for him. That's it for this video, guys. Later. Peace.